My name is Michael Mullery, MD, MBA. I'm a graduate of the University of Notre Dame and the Pennsylvania State University College of Medicine. I'm a board certified medical specialist with a secondary interest in psychiatry. The refractive surgery industry has known since its inception that LASIK surgery carries a risk of depression and suicide. Bad outcomes are not rare, and these outcomes can result in serious qualitative and quantitative vision losses, including blindness. Now the FDA is allowing the very entities that are publicly engaged in minimizing these risks to conduct studies looking at LASIK and its effect on quality of life. This is an overt conflict of interest that defies both, that defies both common sense and the scientific method. There can be no objectivity when the bottom line is the very survival of one's multi-billion dollar cash cow. It is time to leave the study of the psychological consequences of vision loss after LASIK to mental health professionals that are better trained to study this and lack any financial interest in the outcome. In 1999, the journal Psychosomatics, July, August, researchers from Griffith University in Australia, in conjunction with the World Health Organization's Center for Suicide Research, reported on a study that compared suicide secondary to vision loss to suicide secondary to hearing loss. The study found that 63% of hearing impaired suicides had a history of mental illness, compared to only 8% of the sight impaired suicides. In this study, fear of sight loss and the uncertainty about future vision emerged as greater risk factors for suicide than complete blindness. Most importantly, however, sight loss itself was identified as the main causal factor for vision suicides, whereas hearing suicides were coupled with several other causal factors. I would estimate that I have interviewed close to 75 people who have developed suicidal ideation as a result of LASIK. And what I found is that very few of these patients have a history of depression or other psychiatric problems. This finding is consistent with the Griffith University WHO study of vision loss and suicide, and inconsistent with the industry's claims that pre-existing psychopathology is responsible. If vision loss is causal, as the Griffith University WHO study claims, then better screening for pre-existing psychological problems is not the answer. Stopping the vision loss is. How many totally preventable deaths can the FDA allow when there is absolutely no medical need for a procedure? In the following case, LASIK itself is undoubtedly the sole causal factor in this man's suicidal ideation. AJ underwent LASIK and ended up with a result that his surgeon could not explain. Severely overcorrected with irregular astigmatism, AJ could not even read the big E after his surgery. In AJ's own words, my life and world changed beyond description in the next days following my surgery. First, fear sent in as I felt alone and helpless as my life became an endless routine of sitting in front of slit lamps with no improvement in my vision. I was constantly nauseous from the vision imbalance and resulting headaches. Then, out of the blue, panic set in. I began to cry all the time. There seemed no easy way out of the situation I had created for myself. The simple solution to eliminate glasses had become my first ever experience with depression. Deep, deep depression, which I tried to hide from my wife. But my business was suffering and I became obsessed with my vision to the point that I was becoming unglued. I had always been a very stable person. I had no history of mental illness, depression, or drug addiction, nor had I ever been prone to violence. But now, for the first time in my life, I was suicidal and full of rage. How could I stop this from happening to someone else? And how could I make my own pain go away? In another case, a dental student without any history of psychological problems reports himself becoming suicidal after his LASIK left him with constant headaches, blur, and vision that could not be corrected with glasses. I shudder to think how close I was to ending my life, he says. Taking eight courses and studying for a national license exam with one semi-functional eye was a hellish nightmare. This patient reached the point where he found himself with a half-drunk bottle of vodka in one hand and a loaded gun in the other. Incidentally, his surgeon considered him a success. Another patient, SD, with no prior psychological history, reports becoming suicidal when LASIK surgery to correct her myopia produced finger-only vision in one eye and 20 to 100 vision in the other. She is now awaiting bilateral corneal transplantations. She reports that collusion by local refractive surgeons added to her sense of despair, as none of the local refractive surgeons who saw her for second opinions even mentioned to her that she had ectasia. In conclusion, patients are killing themselves as a result of failed LASIK. A risk of death is not an acceptable risk for a totally unnecessary procedure with no medical benefit. Research on this issue remains virtually nil, and thus the full extent of this catastrophic complication remains unknown. Public safety is best served by a moratorium on these procedures so that these previously unstudied risks can be evaluated and understood. Studies looking at the effects of unsuccessful LASIK on depression and suicidal ideation should be done by mental health professionals and suicidologists who are better able to assess mental health issues and who lack the financial conflict of interest that LASIK surgeons and co-managing optometrists obviously have. If a moratorium is not immediately instituted, the labeling of the eczema lasers for the surgical correction of myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism should be altered to include risk of suicide and depression, even in the, ax even in the absence of any pre-existing psychiatric history. Thank you.